when your blood is going through your body and they get stuck in your blood vessels your veins and so forth um and it creates a little a little clump that area is deprived of oxygen that episode of pain is called a crisis now you can get a crisis anywhere in your body wherever your blood flows is where you can get a crisis I love the way that body's sitting up Yeah, there's a reason she walk like this She walk like this Had to send a video, she don't edit her pics She work for it, she on her shit And when she walking by, yeah, I know the truth is I wanna know how she get that sad like that How she get that sad like that I wanna know how she get that sad like that yeah, yeah. With them everyday squats, make your shit pop. Never had them sad shots, but she takes shots. I wanna know how she get that sad like that. That sad like that. Yeah. When I see her, I know. That she earn that shit, treating calories like we. Yeah, she burn that shit. Shout out to What causes a crisis? Dehydration, um, infection sudden weather change being cold stress uh being emotional amongst a few others but those are a few those are the main ones um obviously being an adult you stress about everything and anything so really you just set up to fail <laughs> well i stress all the time so that's my that's the main one for me that causes my me to have a crisis as well as being emotional i'm a woman hormones get all over the place at that time of the month so that doesn't help as well but when i was younger um when i was young well when i was in my teens whenever i used to have a period it used to trigger a sickle cell crisis as well um every month without fail so might be a bit TMI but it's natural it's nature just get over it um but yeah so that can trigger a crisis as well when you get a crisis as well that area sometimes tends to swell um for me anyway physical cell warrior is different um we the core of us is sickle cell but we all deal with different things with sickle cell if that makes sense so what might affect me might not affect somebody else and what might affect them might not affect me but then we could go through the same things um so yeah we are all very different when it comes to a crisis um you don't know when it's gonna come it can come at any time any place anywhere while you're doing absolutely anything um and you don't know how long it's going to last either so it could last from hours to days to weeks um and also it can travel that pain can travel well that clump of blood cells it can travel rather than unsticking um and again every suicide crisis is life-threatening when i'm talking to my support um and I have a crisis and they're asking me, you know, what kind of crisis it is. I wrote my crisis in three different ways. Um, so there's the first one where I'm in crisis, but I'm able to do my day to day perfectly fine. Um, I'm in a bit of pain, but it's nothing that I can't handle. Um, and it's not stopping me from being able to do my day to day um, or anything that I want to do. I just know that I can't do anything strenuous. I need to rest off a bit, ease off, not do too much things. Um, but I can do what I need to do, if that makes any sense. And then there's the second one, which is, it's affecting my day to day. I'm struggling to walk, struggling to carry things, struggling to hold things, struggling to literally do things. Um, so I may need a little bit of help. Um, with doing things and then there's the third one where I am in extreme pain I can't move I'm crying I'm uncomfortable I need help doing absolutely everything going to the toilet going to the toilet having a wash 
cooking for my eggs, cooking for myself, um, tidying up, all of that stuff. I physically cannot do them. No matter how much I want to be able to do it, I can't. Can't sleep and I'm on consistent painkillers. That's it. And then from those painkillers, on the third one, I then have to boost up to morphine um, to help with the pain because that's the only thing that's really, really helping. And again, you don't know which one of those three you're going to have until it comes. And then it's, oh, okay, it's this one. Oh, okay, it's that one. When you're having a crisis, the things that you have to do is like um, making sure you get a lot of rest, which is frustrating very frustrating because obviously your mind as an adult you want to do so many things you've got things that need to be done like you know for instance food shopping or tidying the house you're in the middle of redecorating but you can't do it because you've got a crisis so you've got everything has to be literally put on pause until that crisis goes and you don't know when that crisis is going to go you don't know how long it's going to last um so then it is very frustrating and annoying um but in order to be able to do those things and get better, you have to rest. That's the only thing that you can do. Um, so yeah, rest, keeping hydrated. Um, I drink two of these a day. I've already drunk one today. This is my second one. Um, need to make sure you're taking all your meds as well. And this is like, this is a week worth of meds for me. Um, making sure you're on top of your painkillers. Um, making sure that you're warm, but not too warm. When I have a crisis, like I said, every, every worry I have is different. When I have a crisis, I tend to lose my appetite as well. Um, I don't really get hungry, but I have to force myself to eat because of the strong painkillers that I'm on. Um, plus stomach ulcers is another thing that you are prone to because of sickle cell. What helps a crisis? Heat rubs, massaging, hot water bottles, hot water bottles, baths or showers. Heat in general, really. Um, Painkillers and sleep. But sometimes when you're having a crisis, it can wake you up out of your sleep. Um, or it can stop you from going to sleep any one of them you're in that much pain that you can't sleep um, but obviously being an adult as you can guess it isn't just when you're having a crisis it isn't just physically challenging it's also mentally challenging obviously you can't do what you want to do you're having to have help from your carer you haven't to have help from your support network your mom your dad your sister your brother whoever that may be um you can't do the things that you need to do as a mother for your ex your children my ex um you can't do that so it then makes you feel bad and then not only that then your children see you ill all the time because again that's your life which is their life um and then your ex, my ex, see me out all the time. Because again, they're my ex, they live with me. This is this is their normal. Um, but as a mother, as you can tell, that is challenging. It's horrible, mentally challenging. Um, and I do feel guilty sometimes about it. But there is nothing that I can do because this is my reality. This is me. Um... And it's, there's nothing that I can do to change it. The only thing that I can do to change it is what I do anyway. Is try to, prefer, to try to make sure I do all the things to make sure that I don't have a crisis. But you can still get a crisis either way. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, you always like it's horrible because you're restricted. Like if you're bedridden and you're on your painkillers and then sometimes when I'm on my painkillers and I'm on the morphine I am knocked out it knocks me out for 
days and then when I actually like wake up and I'm awake properly I've missed two or three days but I wake up thinking it's the next day if that makes sense so let's say I've been sleeping from Monday to Wednesday only waking up to have my painkillers or I could actually be waking up to have eat and stuff but I don't remember any of that so come Thursday and I'm actually awake properly and the pain's starting to settle I'm thinking it's Tuesday when really it's Thursday I've missed out on all those days and then you feel crap you feel shit because it's like oh my god I've just missed how many days especially now that I've got my eggs I say now they're like 12 and 10 nearly 11 but yeah so then you're battling with yourself with that because it's like what the hell um so yeah and then when you have when you are on all those medications all those painkillers because you know you're taking painkillers every four hours you take your morphine every two and a half hours imagine taking that all day all night for like seven days straight let's say seven days because it could be seven days it could be more than that but let's say it's seven days and then on the eighth day you feel that you don't have any crisis anymore do you think you can just stop taking your painkillers no no honey mm -mm. no sir you gotta keep taking them and you have to wean yourself off it which then messes with you in your head because it's like i'm having to wean myself off these medications like i'm some drug addict like i want to do this and then when you explain these things to people or you explain the pain oh it can't be that bad or oh what does it feel like um and then they try to advise you on what you should do to help yourself through a crisis or to prevent a crisis or when you're in crisis or um or the uh, medication that you're taking and it's like do you not think that I've tried everything that I possibly can anyway do you not think that I've tried that do you not think I've done that because this hasn't just come yesterday <laughs> like I've lived with this all my life do you not think that you know I've tried that I've done that like and then they're like oh yeah well have you tried doing this mm. yes Susan yes I have yes I have and it didn't work for me might work for somebody else but it hasn't worked for me might work for you but it hasn't worked for me and then it's annoying when you have people that don't have sickle cell whatsoever but they're dictating how you should live your life what you should do how about come and have a couple of days have a week two weeks in my body go through having a crisis go through having having all these illnesses that has stemmed from sickle cell and having to battle every day because it's not just when you're in crisis because you have to battle every day obviously everybody has a, their own battle and some are harder than others but don't come and dictate to me what you think I should be doing to help myself when you're not living in my shoes and you haven't lived in my shoes do you know what I mean and I get that a lot <laughs> a lot you wouldn't believe it but I do then there's you also have those crises like the third one like I was saying like the intense one the severe one and you're uncomfortable um, sometimes with that this crisis you have to be hospitalized there's everything that you're doing at home isn't helping whatsoever you cannot get comfortable your painkillers aren't working no matter how you're taking them on time um, nothing you seem to be doing is helping so you've got to be hospitalized and then when you're at the hospital um, this is why six cell warriors do not go to A&E when they're in crisis because soon as you get yeah you have your crisis and you go to A&E and you tell them I've got sickle cell I'm in a crisis they'll say oh okay so what do we do for you 
What the hell do you mean? What what do you do for me? You're a doctor? Or it's, oh, what, sickle cell? Oh, one second, and then they'll pick out the book and start reading in front of you. What? What do you mean? Aren't you supposed to know what to do? You're, you're the, I'm coming to you. Um, oh, they're not like, oh, it can't be that bad. Oh, it's not that bad, is it? Come and feel what I'm feeling right now. How about that? Um, but anyway, you'll go through A&E. &E. Well, we, we tend not to go to A&E. &E. We go to SCAT Centre, which is a sickle cell and thalassemia centre, um, which is open from 9 to 5, Monday to Friday. And we can go there for day management. Or if they believe that you need to be admitted, then you'll be admitted from there. Um, but obviously on that ward, in, well, in the clinic, they deal with sickle cells so you don't get those dumb questions um so yeah and then when you are with me they check your blood pressure your temperature all of that stuff then they um give you iv fluids a drip in your arm or your hand wherever you can take it um just to make sure that you're hydrated because again when you're in crisis you tend not to eat and drink not because we don't want to, it's just because we don't have that, you're in pain, all you can focus on is that pain. So yeah, um, and then we have subcut morphine, which is where they pinch your skin and give you an injection of morphine. Generally, usually in your stomach, your legs, your bum, that kind, where your muscle, where, where it's more fatty. Um, so yeah, and then you'll run that until your symptoms wear off until the crisis is managed and it goes then you're discharged from hospital i personally do not go to hospital i don't um and that's because of a few reasons one of being i don't like hospitals it might sound stupid because obviously a hospital is my second home i'm always there monthly checkups and all sorts um but i don't like it i don't like staying there um, I'm very much a homebody, like my bed is my safe place, my home is my safe place, that's where I feel safe. Um, secondly, my ex, they ain't coming to see me in hospital with all those germs, no. Like in the 12 years and the 10, 11 years that they've been on this earth, they haven't come to see me while I've been in hospital because I don't want them to see me while I'm in hospital. One, because of the germs, and two, because of the ward that I'm on, um, well, the ward that we get put on is a hematology ward. Now, when you go on that ward, there's like a lot of old people, and they look really, really, really ill. Um, and I don't want my children to have to walk past all these people, these old people, seeing them really ill, and as a child, you're going to think, is that what's going to happen to my mom? And then they're going to worry. It's already hard enough, with the, hard enough for them having to deal with what they have to deal with with me at home. Um, so the whole hospital thing, nah, I don't do it. Um, and those are the main reasons why. But don't get me wrong, if I have a crisis and I can't manage it at home, I'm not stupid to just stay at home. I will go to hospital. And if I get a crisis in my chest, whether it's bad or not, I know that straight hospital, straight away, no questions asked. Um, so I won't fight that. And I'll go in for them those times. Um, and again, no, my children won't come and see me when I'm in. We'll FaceTime, we'll text. But they aren't allowed to come and see me and that's that's my choice um and i've sat down and i've spoke about that to them and they understand they don't like it but they understand my reasoning because again they've had to grow up a little bit more before their time because i'm ill if that makes sense not majorly just you know they've had to mature with certain things oh also when you're in um you might have to have blood trans uh, blood transfusion as well because your hemoglobin might be really low um which is why you're in crisis anyway so that's another possibility that you'll have when you're in hospital 
um, yeah, so with all those things, my personal, um, my emotions are heavily connected to my sickle cell. So when, when my emotions are all over the gaff and I'm upset or I'm worrying or I'm stressed or whatever, guaranteed I'm going to have a crisis. Um, but again, it's inevitable. You can't stop that. <laughs> you can't, you can't be in control of your emotions 24 seven. It's just not possible. Like if I was to have an argument with someone and it's really playing, I'm really playing on my head. Guaranteed that I have a crisis. If something's happened and I'm sad, guaranteed I'll have a crisis. My emotions are very much connected to my sickle cell, which ain't cool. Sickle cell Sally. Yeah, I call my sickle cell Sally. <laughs> no offence to any Sallys that are out there. It's, it's just what I call my sickle cell. I don't like people to see me in crisis at all. Um, down to my eggs. I don't like them seeing me in crisis, but again, <laughs> they've got no choice. I've got no choice. Uh, so there isn't many people out there that have seen me in crisis. But this is a bit of a hard thing for me to do, but I'm going to do it because I need to raise as much awareness and show people the seriousness of it a few years ago when I was in crisis I made a video of me being in crisis um, and I forgot all about it again I was on morphine don't know what I don't even know why I recorded it um, but I did hey ho um, and I came across it a few months ago. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you that video now. I'm going to insert it. Um, like I said, it might be a bit uncomfortable to watch it. I find it uncomfortable to watch it. Um, just because... I don't see myself in crisis, do I? I'm the one that's living it. Um, and when I watch it, all I can think is, you know, this is what my eggs are seeing. This is what my mum sees all the time. This is what my sisters see all the time. And it's not easy knowing that there's nothing that they can do to help or to take that pain away. All they can do is to try and make me feel as comfortable as possible. So yeah, I'm going to play that video now. Um, no blood, nothing like that. Um, but it may be a bit unsettling to watch because I am in pain. I'm in a lot of pain. So here it is. <sighs> so when I explain to people about that I've got sickle cell, and obviously I get episodes of pain. They always ask me, why is it like, what does it feel like? Where is it? How does it make you feel? So I'm currently in crisis. This is a bad one, a fairly bad one. Um, it's in my chest and in my coccyx and in my back. So I am struggling to um, breathe a bit and I'm really, 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 really uncomfortable. Um, I'm taking morphine or morph every two hours, 15 mils. Currently not working. This started earlier on at about one o'clock. Um, <clears throat> Luckily my kids are in bed so they can't see me like this. I hate it when they do. Um, my mum's here helping me. Excuse the look of me, an excuse. Excuse me. Thank you. Um, but yeah, the pain at the minute. Feel my cucks, it feels like it's crushing. Um, 
I can't lie on my back, I can't sit down, because it hurts. Obviously, if you don't know where your cox is, it's the, your tailbone, the bone in your bum. Um, <sighs> my chest feels very tight. Um, like, not crushing, but like I'm... You know when they say about snake, um, and it wraps around its prey to suffocate it, like that, that's how it feels. Like it's very tense, like it's all very tense. Um, what's brought this on? Stress and the weather. Good old English weather, and you'd think that it's a nice day, so you know I'd be cool. But no, it's not always the case. The sudden weather change affects it a lot, quite a lot. Um, as you can see, I am very uncomfortable. But moving helps a little bit, as stupid as it may sound, but it does. Um. I'm just running a bath, hoping that the heat from the bath will help. Um, it did earlier on, so hopefully it will again. Um, if I'm this bad in the morning, I'm going to go and go to hospital. And they'll give me IV fluids and more painkillers. Because painkillers I'm taking at the minute, they're not touching it whatsoever. But, um, yeah, so this is a first hand sickle cell crisis in the flesh. It's not nice. <sighs> um, yeah, I'm gonna go now. I don't like when I tell people. You know, I've got sickle cell. When they know what it is, I get told, Oh, oh, you, you don't look like you're ill. You don't look like you've got sickle cell. And I always say, well, what does a sickle cell person look like? Up to today, I haven't got an answer. But I get it all the time. You don't look like you had sickle cell. I wouldn't... I wouldn't know if you had sickle cell. Okay, you wouldn't know if I have sickle cell because I do like keep it to myself. I'm a very private person, um, and I let you know what I need, what I want you to know. But telling me I don't look like I have sickle cell, huh? The only signs that you will be able to visibly see that someone has sickle cell is the eye white. Our eye whites go yellow. That's it. So when people say that, it's like, how did you expect me to be? How do you, how am I supposed to look? Please. Um, what complications do I have personally from sickle cell? So these are all my illnesses that I have. So I've got sickle cell anemia. That's the main one. Then I've got, um, all right, I'm going to go from head to toe. Do it that way. So... Sickle cell anemia, depression, anxiety, agoraphobia. Um, I have stomach ulcers. Um, I have PCOS, PCOS, which is polycystic ovaries. I have vascular necrosis of both of my hips. I have acute arthritis of my lower back. Um, is that it? Yeah, I think that's it. That's it. Eight. That's all the complications that I have through Super Star. And I will be making... <coughs> sorry. And I will be making other videos um, explaining some of them. Not all of them. And raising awareness about them. I will be doing that. Hold on. I need to set my tablets.
empty took them all for today yes this is the evening been filming this all day um i'm gonna run through some of my tablets quickly right every sickle cell patient has to take folic acid that helps us to produce red blood cells which is oh, i don't know if you can see it And then we take penicillin, which is an antibiotic um, to prevent us getting any form of infections. Then I take Zomor, which is a morphine tablet. Um, I take two a day. It's a 12 hour slow release tablet. Um, and that is for, I have a vascular necrosis in my hips, like I said earlier. Um, and my acute arthritis in my lower back then my painkillers that I take I take dihydrocodeine two of them paracetamol and ibuprofen and that's my evening tablets well that's some of my evening tablets not all of them um, yeah And don't forget, if you're healthy and you're able, please, please, please find your nearest blood donating bank and donate blood. Because like I said, you will be saving our lives. 100% you'll be saving our lives. Like, I, my blood type's rare. I am ORHD negative, one of the rarest. And if you have already donated and it's something that you do or you've done it once or whatever thank you so much um it is much appreciated and you've saved a life like think of that you you've saved a life so we're coming to the end of the video now um and what i did was i got my eggs to give me a few questions to answer what they would ask if they didn't know about sickle cell some of these questions i was very shocked at that asked. oh wow shots because they're very good ones and again like i said they're only 12 and 10. um but yeah so i've covered quite a few of them already but i'm just going to go through them anyway because they did what i asked is it more common in black people or white people more common in black people obviously but again it is questionable that white people can get it because of all the mixed kids and stuff do you know what i mean are you able to have children well i got told that i wasn't able to have children um but <laughs> i got two so i'm presuming yeah and i know a number of people with sickle cell that have had kids um I don't know, well I say I don't know, I can't remember, should I say, if I was told I couldn't have kids because of my sickle cell. I don't think it was, I think it was something else, but hey ho, yes you can. Does having a mental health issue make your sickle cell worse? Um, yes it does. I suffer with depression, anxiety and sometimes agoraphobia. Um, they've all stemmed from having sickle cell. Obviously, other things that have happened in life has um, affected me also, but I think the main ones are is sickle cell is the reason why I've got them because, like I said, you're restricted. You can't do the things that you know a normal adult can do, and then not only that, but you can't do when you're a teenager. You can't do all the things that your friends are doing, so that has a knock-on effect, don't it? So yeah, it does definitely and like with me like i've already said my emotions are very much connected to my sickle cell so depending on my emotions if my emotions are all over the place then my sickle cell is definitely going to act up so yeah is it contagious no it's not contagious it isn't you can't get it through blood spit touching breathing none of that you can't it's not possible it's not. it just isn't i promise 
can other family members get it through pregnancy and having children yes but like i just said if you can't get it by a touch or anything else can people with sickle cell do athletics and exercise yes we can in moderation um over exerting yourself will lead to a crisis for instance um you know when people do like hit workouts at the gym or at home um that elevating your elevating your heart rate so quick will cause you to have a crisis because that's like your body going into shock so we can but we can't you just have to know what you can and can't do because i work out and i've learned how to do it if i was to have children would they get sickle cell no they wouldn't get full-blown sickle cell but they would have the trait because i wouldn't have a child with someone that is ss or sc or as at all no it's one of the questions that you have to ask when you have a significant other and you're looking to have children and you have sickle cell you have to ask that question of okay what is your blood type like what what's your hemoglobin type and if they don't know then you have to find out before you take that plunge into saying yes okay we're going to try for a baby when i have a crisis how long does it last again any crisis is different any warrior suffers differently from another warrior um so with me my crisis is usually last I'd say between the week and a half to the month range. Um, especially lately, I've been really, really ill lately with this whole pandemic going on and the weather up and down. I've been quite ill um, and they have lasted a fair amount. So, yeah. Is it possible to die from sickle cell? Yes, it is. Um, there's a number of people that have died from it, young old middle-aged it's possible are you allowed in certain weathers now i'm not too sure what they meant by this but i think what they were trying to say was um do the weathers affect me so rain yes um if you didn't know a little biology lesson when it gets cold out your blood vessels tend to shrink when your blood vessels shrink Obviously, if you have sickle cell, your blood is going to struggle even more to get through those blood vessels, which is going to cause a blockage, which then will cause a crisis. So, yeah, snow, don't think about it. Well, I don't anyway. Don't go out in that stuff. Not at all. Rain, I try my hardest not to, only if I really need to. Um, if it's cold outside, I don't really like to go outside. Um because I get scared that I'm going to be ill, as silly as that may sound. Um, and when it's sunny, it's like, hey, hey, boo, let's go. Hey, let's party. <laughs> um, but yeah, so. And then the last question is, do you get any warning signs that you're going to have a sickle cell crisis? Now, do, sometimes. Sometimes I don't. Um, sometimes I get a like shooting pain in my back um, or the crisis will come on but it won't be so bad it'll just be like okay it's an ache and then as soon as I get that ache I'll take my tablets I'll take my painkillers um, and then obviously it'll gradually get worse or it might just stay like that like I said three different types of sickle cell crises for me anyway um sorry about the lighting or in out and all over the place uh throughout the video because um i'm new to this i'm just doing what i can with what i've got so far all my socials will be down below also if you like my top miss nefertiti the queen the back of it looks like yeah 
hopefully you can see that because obviously I can't, ain't got eyes at the back of my head. Couture Empire. It's my clothing brand, one that I have. Um, I do do clothing. I customise clothes, so if you've got an idea for a piece of clothing for you, your family, your daughter, your son, your mum, your dad, your uncle, whatever it may be, and you can't execute it yourself, go, over, go on over go on over to the Instagram and drop me a DM and I will more than likely be able to help you out with that. Um, as well as there's a number of other black styled t-shirts to come and that we already do anyway so if you just have a browse or if there's something there that you want that you can't see um then again dm me and i will try my hardest to help you with that but um yeah that's it that's the end of the video i hope you've enjoyed it um and that you've learned something again please 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 like comment subscribe and share this on your socials it's free won't cost a thing um so we can raise as much awareness as possible um i hope you're all doing well i hope you're all safe and yeah that's it i'll see you in my next one bye just a warning just Yeah. Lily yeah. there. Second. Just got all of that to do. Second page and then you got and the then questions. That. And then I'm done. Woo! Woo! How long is this probably an hour? See, it's funny because I never thought this would end. But then the season changed. So half an hour. Well. Yeah. You're different. You don't follow you. Exactly! We're a shepherd. Yes. Right, I'm going to start now. Okay. <coughs> Get in the bath, please. I'm so tired, you know? Oh, I'll be up then. I've still got my bed today. That's I'll be up. Yeah. I'm confused. Tell me where we go wrong. I wish sure that I would be with you for so long. You sleeping with me again tonight? Hmm? Are you going in your bed? Hmm? Your bed. Okay. <laughs> I don't like that. I don't like it. Tell me where did all the magic go? I followed the rules and told you everything you had to know. Had you over every night. Every night was passionate. Plus you met my mother even if it was an accident. Like they all say, like, comment. Like they all say, like, comment and subscribe. To do it, man. It's not about the way you say to my heart. Oh, come on. Something worth mentioning, energy invested in someone I saw potential in. Who kills shivery? They need to get their sentence in. Meanwhile, we arguing, and I can't get a sentence in. We say the hottest love has the coldest end. Oh, oh, oh. You are mine, you are mine, you are mine. Butterfly